Well, as second graders, we start a new book, a chapter book, Kittens in the Kitchen. And we are going to begin um, right here at the bottom of page six, uh, where they are making a little bed for the cat. And I think they're hearing the school bell ring, so we're gonna read a little bit of that too. The bottom of page six. It's in the sun, nice and warm, James said. Good idea. He grinned at Mandy, then blushed. In the distance, the morning bell sounded. Was that the bell, he asked clumsily. Then he shot off for homeroom before Mandy could reply. You hear that, Walton, Mandy said. That's the bell, I have to go. But she felt the strong pull that the cat had over her. Perhaps it was because she, Mandy Hope, age 13, of Animal Ark, Welford, Yorkshire, England, was very like Walton, the school cat. They were both adopted. Her own parents had died in a car crash, too early for her to remember them. And Adam and Emily Hope had taken her in. Now she would do the same for Walton. Softly, she stroked the cat. Then she caught hold of herself. I'll stop fussing now and leave you to cope. She knew animals like privacy at this time. No one will bother you, and I'll be back later to see how you're getting along. Quietly, she backed down the porch. Then quickly, she cut across the garden, through the gate, and over the asphalt to the playground. The second bell had rang. Mr. Williams, in his padded green vest, his old corduroy trousers, and his big lace boots, crossed paths with Mandy as she ran into school through the main door. As usual, he only grunted, head down and grumpy. Mandy thought it was best not to say anything to him about Walton and her arrangements for the birth. Leave it till later. Even Mr. Williams's heart would melt once he saw Walton's kittens nestling on his back porch. Mandy rushed into class. She tried and failed to concentrate all the way through math, geography, and English. At half past three, James was waiting for Mandy at the lockers. Ready, he asked. Animals were the most important thing in Jamie's life too. Dodging the crowds, they sprinted together up the slope to the custodian's house. Mandy could hardly breathe. She was so excited. This was Walton's big day. Walton, Mandy called, opening the gate and crossing the lawn. They turned the corner up onto the porch. Mandy half closed her eyes. There Walton would be, tucked up in her newspaper bed, shielding her new kittens. She couldn't wait. She opened her eyes. The bed was empty, clean and dry and quite empty. Mandy looked at James. They felt the bottom of the world fall out. Where is she? James gasped. Mandy shook her head. It's today. I'm sure it's today. She couldn't understand it. She'd seen enough cats giving birth to kittens at animal art to know just how they looked when the great day came. Mandy and James stood on the porch, confused and alarmed. Listen, Mandy said. The Williams' back door stood open in the afternoon sunshine and Mandy was sure she picked up a sound from inside. A tiny, high-pitched, squeaking sound. James stared at her. What is it? Mandy stepped across the kitchen threshold. Mr. Williams, she whispered. Mrs. Williams. The kitchen was neat and clean, scrubbed to perfection. Its lace curtains shone pure white. Its black and white tiles looked like an advertisement for a floor cleaner, but it was empty. The squeaking noise was slightly louder. In here, Mandy said. They tiptoed into the empty room. It's still very muffled, James said. He looked inside cupboards, trying to find the noise. They looked under shelves behind the vegetable bin, but still the noise escaped them. Walton! Mandy called gently, but Walton, wherever she was, 
didn't want company. Only the muffled, faint squeaking continued. Mandy followed it until she finally tracked it down. There was a laundry basket in the corner of the kitchen by the washing machine. It was an old-fashioned straw one with a lid. Mandy put her ear to it. The squeaking came from inside. Gingerly, she lifted the lid. It was dark and warm in there. The high-pitched noise rose to a wailing chorus. Mandy adjusted her eyes to the darkness and peered inside. She saw the black and white patches of Walton's fur. She saw the cat's eyes glint as she looked up. Obligingly, Walton lifted a paw and shifted sideways. Look, she seemed to be saying, four perfect kittens. Mandy could just make them out, four tiny curled up things, gray and blind, skinny, helpless creatures. She thought they were the most beautiful things she'd ever seen. Aren't they wonderful, Mandy breathed, as James came to look over her shoulder. He saw their blunt little faces and blind eyes. Yes, he said. He clearly needed more time to get used to them. Oh, but they are, Mandy cooed. She touched Walton gently under the chin. Good girl, she said. The kitten squeaked louder in protest in the light and the cooler air. Mandy gave in and replaced the laundry basket lid. And then their luck ran out. Someone crossed the porch and filled the kitchen doorway. He was tall, bulky, and his feet made a noise across the wooden floor of the porch. Amy, he called. He paused, wiped his feet, and stepped into the kitchen. Mr. Williams, um, hello, Mandy said feebly. James stood alongside her, straightening his school tie, trying to look braver than he felt. What the heck? Williams bellowed with shock. Amy, where are you? What the heck? he said again. His wife came tottering through the front room. She was slightly deaf, slightly nearsighted. Don't shout, Eric, she sighed. I can hear perfectly well without you having to shout. Oh, can you? Her husband fumed. I'll bet you heard these two prowling around in here perfectly well, too. Miss Williams sighed again. Sit down, all of you, she said. Everybody sit down while I make us a cup of tea. It was clearly her cure for everything. Mandy and James sat down as they were told, as far away from Mr. Williams as possible while his wife made the tea. Well, he said over and over, can't a man even call his house his own anymore? Oh, shush, Eric, his wife said, giving him his favorite mug and a butter cookie. Just give them a chance to explain. She was little and skinny, half his size, but Mandy and James could see who was boss. Well then, Miss Williams smiled sweetly at Mandy, I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. There, there is, Mandy agreed. She looked wildly at James for help. The cat had kittens, James blurted out. In your laundry basket, Mandy finished off. What? Mr. Williams shot to his feet. He backed off into a corner. Wait, Miss Williams went to investigate. She lifted the basket lid and peered inside. It has, she confirmed calmly. It had kittens, all right. Oh, my best shirts, Mr. Williams stammered. It had kittens on my best shirts. Calm down, Eric, Miss Williams shook her head. It's only a stray cat. Only, the custodian rolled his eyes in helpless anger. She won't do any harm, Mandy broke in. They've, they're, they are very clean animals. She won't leave any mess. She tried to reason with him. If you just leave her and her kittens there in peace for a few days, they'll soon be on their feet. Then you can make them a better place, a cardboard box, for instance. Just line it with newspaper and put it out on the porch. That should be fine. A few days, Mr. Williams repeated. His face seemed to be stuck. His mouth had dropped open. His eyes were bulging. Mrs. Williams took Manny and James aside. She shook her head. 
It's no use. He can't stand them. Mandy was slow to catch on. Can't, can't stand what? Only now was she beginning to sense that there was a problem. Cats, he can't stand them. They set his nerves on edge. Mandy breathed in deeply. How could people hate cats? He says they dig up his garden. He can't abide them. Miss Williams sounded sorry, but she sounded as if they just have to understand. Her husband was stubborn as a mule over cats. She turned and started cleaning away the tea things. Just a few days, Mandy said, dashing from one to the other. We can't move them for a few days in case the mother decides to abandon the kittens. She might if they get moved. Please let her stay where she is. She felt breathless with fright, but she tried not to show it. Stay in my laundry basket, Mr. Williams snorted. On my best shirts, he tossed his head. A load of smelly cats? They're not, Mandy interrupted, but James stopped her. He had a better idea of when to answer back than Mandy. <coughs> not likely, Mr. Williams headed straight at Mandy and James to shoo them out of his kitchen. Go on, you two, get moving. I won't warn you again. Mandy and James backed off toward the door. Mr. Williams towered over them. Please, Mandy pleaded. She felt sick at heart. No, Mr. Williams thundered. They've got to go, he glanced at his wife. And there's no use you looking like that, Amy. I'm saying no, and I mean no. He looked down at Mandy's terrified face. I'm telling you once and for all, I'm not having them kittens in my kitchen. Hmm. He gets a little upset. Well, we'll have to figure this out. Uh, we'll begin on chapter two, page 16, tomorrow to see what happens to the kittens and the mother in the basket. Thanks so much for listening, second graders, and I'll see you later. Take care. Bye now.